minds think alike. Great minds podcast. Great minds think alike. Great minds podcast. Great minds think alike. Great minds podcast. Great minds think alike. Let's rock. You're now tuned into the Great Minds podcast. You're now tuned into. All right, welcome to the Great Minds podcast. This is Derek. This is Vaughn. We're here with Chef JD. What's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, man? Yeah, man. Appreciate having you on. I know Vaughn was uh telling me a lot about you. Uh so um pleasure having you on, man. Thank you for having me. I was uh excited about this. It's my first no. podcast, so I was like, all right, I gotta I gotta make sure it's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, true. So for people that don't know, like we go way back. I've known you since you was born. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we got we got matching outfits, okay? Matching outfits. We got matching outfits together. For real. So we go way back, man. So so just tell everybody, like, how did you get, like, your background, man? Like, basically, like, you know, where you from and all that good stuff. All right. Um, so I'm from the Bronx, born and raised. Yes. Um, yes, exactly. Boogie down. Um, so, yeah, born and raised in the Bronx. And... um. I've, <laughs> all my life, I, I like to cook, and it never really dawned on me uh, as a kid or like a teenager or whatever, you know, to be a chef or anything like that. I went to school. I, I had plans to go to school for <coughs> fashion merchandising in Atlanta. That didn't work. Um, well, not that it didn't work, but, you know, just wasn't in the plans. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. And um, so, you know, I, I ended up going to community college here in the city at uh, BMCC. And I went there for small business management. Um, and that was cool. I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do, but I was sure that I wanted to own my own business in some way, shape, or form. Um, but you know, I, I did the 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 typical college kid that lives in the city, lives at home. You know, I worked and went to school. And I worked a regular like nine to five for like the last 15 years. And maybe like Towards 2015, 2016, you know, for as long as I can remember, everybody was like, oh, you should, you know, you should cook, you know, you should be a chef, this, this, and that. And I was just like, ah, I, I think for me, I didn't want to lose the fun in it. So I was just like, nah, I don't want to do that for work. Yeah. So I'm going to just, you know, yeah, no doubt. I, I do, I'll find something else, whatever. But the longer I started to work for, uh, you know, all these different corporations or whatever, I was just like, I'm not. I, I, I'm not really trying to clock in <laughs> and out every day, uh, especially for a place that I hate. So I just decided, I was like, you know what, I'm going to take this leap and jump into the to the chef world, the cooking world. And, you know, that was three years ago. And um, here we are today. <laughs> All right. Um, so in general, so you know how to cook. Um, you get to cook in school. Mm -hmm. uh, what was different about like your approach to cooking from from like you cooking in your kitchen or whatever to you um, going to culinary school? What was different? Well, I actually didn't go to culinary school. I okay. wanted to go to I, I wanted to go to culinary school. I actually went flew down to Atlanta. I was like maybe twenty twenty one. Flew down to Atlanta. Um, had an orientation at La Cordon Bleu, uh, and it was cool. Like I liked it and. For some reason, I just, I, I couldn't take the plunge. So I was like, you know, I could either go to school or I can learn this shit myself. So I pretty much taught myself how to do everything. Um, you know, I've, I've had my influences as a, as a kid. My mom is a amazing, yep. me, an amazing cook. Yep. Um, my aunts are, are an amazing cook. Vaughn's mom is an amazing cook. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had my influences growing up, you know. And little by little, it was like I tried a little bit more. And I, I think that, you know, that's the biggest thing that people are, uh, I guess, afraid about cooking is like they don't want to go through the trial and error. And that's all cooking is, is really trial and error until you get it right. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I took my time and I, I you know, looked up recipes. I, 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 it's so crazy because I was cleaning out my closet a few weeks ago. And I had like stacks of recipes in the closet <laughs> from like yeah. years ago. Um, but yeah, it's just like, it was just something I was just like, you know, maybe I can't take this full time. So, you know, little by little, I started doing little things. You know, I started baking more. I started cooking a little bit more. Um, and I, I actually have to attribute most of that to the Food Network because... <laughs> <laughs> word, word up. 
there was a lot of shows like you know that I was hooked on and like enamored with as a youth or whatever and kind of shaped you know and molded me into the the chef that I am today you know it's funny I got I got a story that you probably don't even know about because you were so young he's six years younger than me everybody listening so mm-hmm. your uncle you know God God bless your uncle um, uh-huh. he actually cooked for my mom my dad and myself one day oh, yeah? prior to the house, he probably don't even know this because he probably wasn't even born. I, I did not know. At all. He probably wasn't born yet. He cooked this a meal, so I was probably uh, like, I was probably like eight to ten. So you had to right. be probably two to four if you were. Right. I could have been younger. <laughs> he cooked this elaborate meal for us, and my mom was like, "Yeah, he cooks. He's a chef, right? Because uh-huh. he used to he 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 used to cook. Yeah, so he I was a professional he, chef. Professional chef. So I think that was already in your blood." So I think so now now to see you doing it now, I'm not surprised. Uh-huh. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, so I think it's in your blood, man. It's so crazy though, because uh <laughs> I was telling the story a few weeks ago about my first cooking lesson with my uncle. And I he had, you know, called my mom and told him told her to drop me off. So my mom dropped me off. And we were making sausage bread and I think it was lasagna or something, some some pasta. My man said sausage bread. I know. I'm, I'm like, what? <laughs> what does that even entail? It's, 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 literally <laughs> like, it's literally like dough stuffed with sausage and peppers and onions and shit. It's not good. Right. Um, like cheese and stuff. And my mother often says that I have a temper like my uncle, but I don't. I don't believe so. I don't. I, I think we we agree to disagree, but. My uncle was teaching me something, and his partner came in the room to say something and pissed him off, and he threw an egg at him. And I remember being like, I remember being in shock, like, what the hell just happened? But I I, I often get from, like, my aunts and stuff that, you know, I I remind them a lot of my uncle. And to me, that's, like, the biggest compliment. I wish that I had more time to, like, you know, share, because he's passed at this point. But I wish I had more opportunities to share with him and to like pick his brain and stuff like that because yeah. i was i was like 12 or 11 when i you know when he gave me that lesson um yeah i i hadn't i never knew that he did that for you guys yeah he so, did um, he did talk about that off do you remember what you guys had no nah, i don't remember that oh. i just remember that my mom was like we going you know and and we're going to eat i'm like all right i'm going you know i'm right. there but I, I was too young to realize what we were eating i was just eating whatever right. we were eating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, so so i know i know it was mad good my mom still brings it up though so she wow. still up like yo you remember that time we went i'm like kinda, right. kinda. yeah, yeah vaguely, i remember man. the food was good, the food was good. <laughs> I ate it. all right so jd what's the first meal you made and was like this is this is official this is good wow uh I actually have a follow-up too <laughs> actually <laughs> i had i was making this uh i made a white lasagna and I had never, I had never heard of it before, and I saw it on one of those shows, and I was just like, "Let me try that." I still so, never heard of it. <laughs> so it's basically like lasagna without the sauce, lasagna, right? but with white sauce. So like, white sauce. Uh, it's like an Alfredo or like a gar- a garlic cream sauce or something like that. Um, and a lot of my aunts, they are uh, what do you call that? They have acid reflux, mm-hmm. so they can't do the red sauce. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna make this. So I made it, it was like they had spinach and Italian sausage, um, uh, basil, a whole bunch of like just good shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I, re- I remember like when everybody tried it for like the first time, because it was the first time I had, I had had it, you know, everybody was like, what is white lasagna? So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. So I made it and, they tried, and it was just like an audible gasp <laughs> amongst <laughs> the collective. And I was like, Oh, okay, yes, yeah, so I did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was mad good. It was really, really good. Yeah, um, my follow so that, I was gonna say, I'm sorry, my follow up was gonna yeah. be what's the first meal that everybody liked? So you I mean you answered it then. Because yeah. it's different it's different when you like your food. You know, right. yeah. you can make some you can make something that's not post worthy but it's slamming. Right. <laughs> but you're not but you're not gonna make that for your aunt. Right. That's something she can cook too, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Right. Um, actually, when I, I had made this uh, sweet potato cheesecake, mm-hmm. and it had like okay. it had like oh. caramel on top with like uh, uh, <laughs> pralines, and my sister, she was like, she's a very picky eater. At the time, she might have been like 
seven or eight. And she had like three pieces of it. Her, her tooth, she was like in agony for the rest of the night because her teeth was hurting because she had so much of it, so much shit in. <laughs> I, I was like, okay, so that, that must mean you like that. You, you, must, you must really, really enjoy yeah, that. She was going in. <laughs> going to town. <laughs> about to get a cavity, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm saying, like, I'm saying, like, he don't, you know, he 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 throws down in the kitchen. So nothing was a surprise to me because, like, even one thing he um, I I took from my mom took from you, but I took from my mom, so it came from you. Uh-huh. Anyway, right. the hummingbird cake. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So the hummingbird cake, right? So what's that? <laughs> you, you, you got something with the hummingbird? It, 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 it got sauce like bread, hummingbird cake. <laughs> Yo, oh, tell man. you, uh, yeah. I, so. Yeah, tell me what the hummingbird cake is. Essentially, a hummingbird cake is a carrot cake without the carrots. And so, but you, you sub it with like different things. So my my hummingbird cake, there's pineapple in it, there's banana in it. Um, some Sometimes I do toasted coconut, but apparently a lot of people are like allergic to coconut, which I did not know until yeah. recently. Yeah, right, that's a weird <laughs> thing like, going really? on. Yeah, people allergic to everything. Right. <laughs> Um, you can add nuts to it or whatever, but uh, and, and you you uh, top it with cream cheese frosting. It's like crack. It's so good. Yeah, it's crack. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what a hummingbird cake is. But go ahead, bro. Yeah, no, I remember hummingbird. doing that, like doing uh-huh. that hummingbird cake, and my mom was like, "Yeah, I got it from the I'm Like, All right, let me check this out, JD. I'm like, All right, let me see what's up. So I put it on and I ate it right, but it fell. Uh-huh. It fell on me. It, it, it didn't look good at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it fell on me, and when it fell, I was like, "Damn!" So I was like, "Yo, I spent too much time making this cake. I don't care how it looked." So I made the cake, and it was falling right. Eating it like soup. Nah, nah, nah. It was, nah, nah, nah. It was still there, but like it was like shifting on me, right? I was like, "All right, so uh-huh. I cut it." And everybody like in the house was like, "That cake looked ugly. I don't want that cake." I said, All right, so, right? so the kids was like, "Well, Kyla wasn't born yet, but Jay was like, I don't want that cake.'" Keisha was like, "I don't want that cake." I'm like, "All right." <laughs> yeah, they took the cake. They was like, "Yo, it was good." <laughs> I was like, "Yo, it was good, no matter how it mm-hmm. looked." I said, "I ain't posting this on IG." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's for the <laughs> stomach. For the stomach, yeah, they, exactly. They up, man. <laughs> but that's when I knew because I was getting recipes. Like, you know, you can cook where like my mom was giving me recipes from him. Yeah, you that's know? dope. So typically, like my mom would give me the recipe, and it's like something that she did. She's like, "No, yeah. no, no. I, I got something I want you to try." Right. I'm like, "All right." So I, that's why I knew you. You, you he was official. official. Yeah, I was that's like, dope. all right. I, I didn't know that. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> that warm that warms my heart. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, man. Um, JD, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite meal to cook? Uh, favorite meal to cook. All right. And is so, it because you? And is it because you like it, or or you like? Like, why do you like that to cook that? Whatever it is. All right. So I'm gonna give you two. Okay. So like my my go to. Whenever, like, you know, I'm in a rush or, you know, I just want something quick. And this is probably, <laughs> I'm probably going to get the side eye from my fellow chefs, but uh, I'm, like, a wing fanatic. Like, I love wings. I make all types of sauces. So we, I can eat wings every day and be fine. Right. So, like, <laughs> that's, that's my, and, and to take us to the next level, I make them in the air fryer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. I mean, if you're a chef, you might get the side eye, but... Right, exactly. Yo, the air fryer changed the game in 2020. Changes, it is life changing. Nah, I see what he's saying. I see what he's saying, though. Like, like it's cool for us. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, so, like, that's usually, like, my go-to. I I could probably have one three or four times a week, and I probably shouldn't, but that's my go-to. But outside of that, um, have you ever had or heard of Diria Tacos? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So birria tacos are basically they say it's like the cheap the cheap meat, but you can use any type of beef essentially. I use chuck or short ribs sometimes. You braise it. It's a process to it's a process to make and it's a process to like assemble, but the end product is like phenomenal. It'll knock your socks off. But essentially you like make the taco meat, the beef or whatever, and you braise it for a few hours and at the end of the cooking time, usually there's like a thin layer of, of fat at the top of the, you know, braising meat. Yeah. And you dip the you dip the tacos in, and then you fry the tacos on both sides, and you fill it with you know your meat or whatever. I use meat and I use cheese, 
and it's like a double taco, and you close it. It's like a heart attack taco. It's actually not. It's literally it's just meat and cheese, and the the fat is like it gives it color, it gives it flavor. It's mad good. But uh, that's probably like one of my, my favorite one of my favorite cuisines is Mexican food. So we eat Mexican food often. Um, probably not as often as I would like, but birria tacos, everything. Yeah, I never Mexican. heard of those. And, and JD, the thing, the thing about the thing about chefs that in general or cooks in general, I guarantee you really don't eat the food. So like a lot of the food that you make, you making it, but you might taste test it, of course. But you're Absolutely. not making it for you. Everyone around you is eating. Right. It. You know what I'm right. saying? So, 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 why is that the case, though? <laughs> I, <laughs> I think primarily is because, like, as you're cooking, you tasting. You know, as as you're cooking, you you might have a little some some on the side so to keep your sustenance because being in the kitchen all day is grueling. Yeah. Okay, it's not <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. So, like, being in the kitchen for twelve hours, you got like a little you know, a little piece of chicken or some whatever. So by the time everything is done, it's like, I'm not even interested. I'm too tired to eat. Right. Um, and often, <laughs> often time that is the case. And I always get like, oh, you know, did you save some for yourself? And I'm like, nah, it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, like I'll, I'll have these dinners or these orders or whatever. And at the end of the night, I'm like, okay, so what am I going to eat now? <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, that's I, crazy. I, I, he gonna have a bowl of cereal now. Right, exactly, and that's how it is a lot of the times. It really is, and I'm I, I just like whatever. I'll have some tomorrow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. um, yeah, it's just like you constantly moving. So it's like you really don't have time to eat, to eat <laughs> and yeah. really enjoy it like everybody else does. Right. On um, Savon so said basically you you uh he was telling me earlier you basically took a leap of faith and just said I'm gonna leave this nine to five. I'm gonna get my yep. cutting, uh, cutting board, right? Mm -hmm. Cutting board catering. Cutting board yeah, catering. you get the cut board uh, catering. I guess one, how's that going? And two, how's it how's it feel to just step out and be your own boss? You know, it was it was it was a big challenge because initially, you know, I was I had a really good job, and and when I say really good, I mean like as far as like my benefits and you know my perks and stuff like that. The job was shit, and I hated it. So I couldn't wait to get out of there. But um, I had security, and I was just like, yep. I don't know. I don't know if I want to take the sleep because I'm not going to have health insurance. I'm not going to have, you know, nothing, honestly. Yeah, yep. So it's just like, you know, what do I do? And I had got I, something that happened at work, and I was just literally, like, at my max. And I was like, I texted my dude, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm coming back to work tomorrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not... This is not it. Like, I, I can't do it no more. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just take the leap. And I was like, I have a, I made a plan or whatever. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to it and see how it goes. I'm, I said, at least, the least I could do is try. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, but I was like, you know, I have to try because if I don't, you know, I'm going to constantly, you know, wonder, you gonna wonder beat myself it. up right about it. So I did it. And three months later, COVID happened. So I was just like, damn, if only I, if only I had an inkling of this information, I, it, we definitely wouldn't be here today. But right. I'm grateful for it because it taught me a lot over the last year. And, you know, I was doing it part time and that was cool. Um, but I wasn't able to do a lot of the things that I wanted to do. So uh, I was like, well, how how am I going to take this off, you know, the ground? What am I going to do to start things up or whatever? So we started having these things called uh, supper club. So every weekend I would do dinners and uh, for takeout, obviously, because, you know, it was amidst COVID. And, um, you know, we would either do deliveries or you can come and pick it up. So we did that for like, I want to say six or seven months, well into the summertime, I should say. Um, and it was good. It was cool. Like during during the COVID time, like when it first first happened, you know, we had went to like some discount stores. We got a whole bunch of paper towel. We got a bunch of like bleach and uh, gloves. A whole bunch of like of the necessities that we needed. Um, and we packed them up with the dinner. So you know, they went to the people that ordered the food just so that you know. I felt like we. I wanted to do something for the community and yeah. you know, you know, put my my best foot forward. So I was like. That was that's the best that I can do at the moment. So I was like, let's do that. And everybody was like super receptive of it. It was really cool. It made me feel really good. Um, so that was like maybe the first 
half of the year. Come summertime, we had we launched our drinks, our uh, supper, uh, cyber sips, I'm sorry, I'm to say supper club, um, which were like, it was a line of five cocktails and they came in three different sizes. And you can order them, we had them shipped all over the country. We shipped to Los Angeles, we shipped to Texas, we shipped to Miami. Like all summer we were shifting drinks. And it was like, it was really cool because I had the idea for a very long time. And I, it's so crazy because I had, I got the idea from this cocktail company that I saw like on Instagram or whatever. And I was like, that would be really cool. So I was like, well, let me try it. And I tried it, it, it did really well. And maybe a few months after that, I actually saw the cocktails in the store. It was like an online thing for a long time. And I saw them in the store and I was like, oh, let me try them. And they were actually like really good. So I was like, it made me feel really good to, you know, create something and bring it to, to fruition and the people actually like it. Um, so that was a cool thing too. Let me just get a paper to open my head is sweating. Exactly. <laughs> Mad bright. On the French but, um, fry light. Where is right, it? right, right. Um, so yeah, so it, it's, it's been going pretty good, you know, uh, our clientele has increased. Um, we've made some really good money over the last three years. I have a lot of other things that I want to do, um, but you know, with COVID, with the COVID restrictions and stuff, they don't really pan out. It doesn't really make sense to do them right now. So we got that on ice for the moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have we have a lot of cool things that uh, we have in store. We have uh, planned, but we're just waiting for the right time to do them. It's good, man. Yeah, it's definitely good. Talk about. And we talked offline about this. Um, just in general, let, let the people know about the competition in this the chef game, mm-hmm. the catering game, and how it, <laughs> it's a lot of backstabbing and all that stuff. So yeah. talk about that a little bit. How, what have you noticed and seen that when you came mm-hmm. into this environment, thinking like, all right, everyone's my friend, we all could, we just get this money together, and you start right. seeing the things that happen behind the scenes. How, how do you feel about that? Well, I feel like with any industry outside of like, you know, these mega corporations, I mean, there's going to be competition everywhere. And, um, you know, so I expected that, but I felt like, you know, diving into this realm that there would be a little more of like camaraderie, I guess. And that's not the case. (laughs) And not to say, not to say that everybody, you know, everybody's assholes or anything like that, but like, it's very rare that you come across somebody that you can like bounce stuff off that's in your same field or doing the same things that you're doing without you know them feeling like oh you're either trying to bite or you know you're trying to get one up on them or something like that so it's very competitive so a lot of times it's like you feel like you're out in in the sea by yourself and you have to kind of just figure it out um so that's that's kind of been what uh i've experienced so far um and you know you you will have some people that will you know give you compliments or you know repost your things or whatever the case may be but a lot of the times it's just like you know every man for himself until you until you like make a name for yourself and then everybody's like oh yeah, let's do it. promo together. Let's work yeah. together. Let's do this. Let's need do that, promo together. That cosign. Are you guys showing us that, that chopped cheese egg roll you had up? Yeah, I saw that jet. I was like, ooh-wee. Yeah. Yeah. That jet is a fish, yo. I actually got to make a bunch of those this weekend. Yeah. Those is the dope, yo. I might hit you up for an order. Yo, yo, you yeah, got chopped. You got some chop, uh, chopped chicken cheese? <laughs> yeah, yeah we, can, we can do chopped chicken cheese. That's fun. That, that joint look good. I stopped eating meat in December, so. Oh yeah, but I suck. You don't eat chicken either. Uh, a couple times a week, but no red meat, no pork, wow. no pork, no bacon, none of that. So I stopped that. Like no two. bacon. Nope. Yeah, I don't eat bacon Damn. either. I stopped. Nah, I you stopped. Stop and, bacon too. Yeah, bacon I stopped. And, <laughs> all right, slow down. Slow yeah, down. I stopped. In, um, <laughs> I stopped in December, but you know, all I see is burgers on TV now. I'm just course, like, yo, you know, you know, I have. I never eat burgers anyway. I'm surprised. I ain't know you. Didn't rarely, stop. rarely. I'll never eat burgers. Mm. All right. Nah, I, I mean, turkey burger here and there, yeah, but mm-hmm. I don't Right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. eat red meat. I haven't eaten red meat since college, really. True. Well, uh, I'm sick. sorry. I can't say the same. I got sick from, <laughs> No, no, no. I got nothing against it. It ain't 100% good. I got sick from eating eating meat. Oh. Uh, and once you get sick from something, then you kind of... Uh-huh. 
I'm not saying. Yeah, you know, that was like Dante. For a long time, he stopped eating meat, my brother. Um, mm -hmm. He saw some some documentary at school and was like, okay, I'm, I'm good on the meat. And he, he didn't eat meat for like 10, 11 years. Wow. And then he had his boys. And his boys are literally like the same, the same. They won't touch no meat at all. And not because like he's like, oh no, y'all can't have it. They just don't eat it. They yeah. only eat chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if you see uh, if, if the household, if your dad's not eating, your mom and bringing it into the house, or dad, yeah. you're not going to know what you're missing. Right. You know, right. so not thinking about it. Um, I was on, uh, you got any other cooking, cooking questions for us? Yeah, cooking, man. Uh, all right. So what's up? What's up? Hit me with the question. <laughs> we see, we see everybody hating, not hating, but people ain't. So who who's the first person? And I and I, I, I placed the order too. Uh -huh. You know, I should have placed the order before the food was great. No, who's the first person that supported you? Now the you, first now, person now you gotta say the name. Oh no, they, no, I'm, they, I'm, they, I'm gonna say their name. They, they can see it. <laughs> they can see it. You can just say, you know what I'm saying? Like who's the first person when you say you was doing this? And they were like, all right, you was like trying, like, I don't know, I don't got no orders yet. Let me see what I'm gonna do. Who who came through? So my best friend, and <laughs> I like I love her to death. Like she supports me through and through. She lives, she used to live here in New York. She moved to Miami a few years ago. Um, and by far, she's like my number one supporter. Like she, like I said, she has she does, hasn't lived here in three years, but any time I post anything, every th every time I post, she's reposting it. She's texting me. She's like, "Oh, send me send me the pictures. Send me this. Send me the blurbs or whatever, so I can post it too." Um, she actually went as far as like when I first first started. Um, she made a book for me, <laughs> and it had like all of my um, like pictures, like all the food that I posted. She had put them in a book, and she was like, "You can use this as like a, a showcase." And I was like, wow, it wasn't even like, and I, I tell people all the time, it's not about, you know, supporting monetarily, which obviously, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, that's love. what you want ultimately, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. exactly. Um, but like little things like this, you know, and the support, like the, the social media support and stuff like that, like that's that stuff matters because unfortunately, no matter how, how good my food may be, if I don't have a certain amount of followers or, you know, if I'm not getting a certain amount of traction, you know, people aren't really as, you know, receptive or intrigued, I guess. You know what I'm saying? So it's difficult trying to navigate that. So I, I just I just thought that that was like really cool. It showed me that she was like really supportive and was like down for, you know, the cause. And I, I really appreciated that. Um, so she was one of the very first people, um, you know, a couple of my friends, people that I knew in the area, they you know, people that knew that I cooked, uh, supported. I actually got a lot of support at work, which I was surprised <laughs> about. Surprised. Um, I was, I was, you know, people at work, they, they shady. So, you know, you, you could never be too sure. Right. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it was good. I was, I, it made me want to go harder because I was just like, it was, it was daunting. It was a daunting task to even like put things together. I remember, you know, emailing these graphic designers trying to get the menus together, like when I was first launching Cutting Board. Um, and just trying, because literally, I was like, I don't know where to start. I don't know anybody that owned their own business. I didn't have anybody that I felt like would know what to do. So it was just, like I said before, I had to figure it all out. So it was, it was, it was daunting. And to, you know, get the reception that I did initially was like, it, it was really, you know, heartfelt. So it, it it just gave me the job to to go harder. No doubt, that's, that's good. That um, that support with reposting and all that that's mm -hmm. bigger than that's bigger than monetary sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Because you never know like what type of networks your friends have, or right. you know, all it takes is one person. That's it, and, and you, you never know who's who. Who's looking? Who's right. looking? Who's following? Because yep. people are always looking at what's going on, and you can get reposted. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can put something and get mm -hmm. reposted, and next thing you know, you got two. A million views or something like that about something. Right. Like that. Oh, yeah. Like, yep. Yep. You know? Uh, so what are you doing your um downtown? Like what type of music listening to? What you grooving to right now? Uh, what am I grooving to right now? Uh or just overall, it could be old, new, whatever. Yeah, whoever you like. Well, I, I'm, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I know I'm, the answer. <laughs> 
<laughs> you do know the answer. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, she hasn't had, we haven't had any new music. I'm a, I'm a big, like, Beyonce stan. So Beyonce is, like, top on the list. But I, I, I love R&B. I love uh, Kalani. I love Gideon. Yeah. Um, I think Kalani next What are we one. listening to? Like she, she really is. She's, like, she, she has it all. She has the look. She has the the lyrics you know she yeah. sounds amazing you know it's so cool to see like how she's blossomed because she she started out as like this underground you know girl that nobody really knew about or you know it was a, a select group of people that knew who Kalani was. Have like a cult following Not right that. exactly uh and it's so cool to see how you know how far she's come but you know she she's dope um, I don't know. I listen to a little bit of everything. Like, I like a little pop. I like rap. I like, you know, I, I was similar to <laughs> Cardi fan because, you know, yeah. Boogie Down. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so she so went diamond. Right. Exactly. Like, she's she's also another one that I'm super proud of. Like, coming from. And she where grinded, she man. From. Yeah. She got from right. the mud, man. Like, people, people hate it on her, and I get it, and I understand, but. But sometimes you gotta sit back and just say, "Yo, and keep she doing did it. it, keep running, yep. She came from the mud, did it. Well, however she did it, but she she, she worked, worked the way she did it, and people right. are cheating because they because they can't, you know, can't, <laughs> can't get that, you know. Right, exactly. I mean, if you really listen, like, they don't there's not people that say bad stuff about her. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's not people nah, that saying you, like you mean, you mean industry. Oh, you mean yeah, you just like it's just okay. like you don't get bad stories about her, like she's a backstabber, like for the you know, right. for the most part, people people like how she, how she is and how she grinded. Mm-hmm. She just got her mouth on her and you know, yeah. whatever yeah, that's you part take of it. with the bad. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I, you, yo, you keep it pushing. I, I tell Derek all the time, man, from the Bronx, we we biased, man. It doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't matter what she Period. does, we're gonna root for her. It don't matter. That's it. That's my girl. Um but yeah, I like I like a little bit of everything. Uh what rap is you listening to outside of Cardi? So, <laughs> I like, it took me a very long time to get with, like, the the trap rap. And I was just yeah. like, mm, what is this? And my brothers were, like, obsessed. Mm-hmm. So, I have to attribute <laughs> my now standing for trap music <laughs> uh, yeah. to my brothers. So, you know, the baby, he's dope. Like, I, he, he, he needs some, some work because... We're gonna say we're gonna say about he baby. Gotta stop fighting. He gotta, gotta stop it. fighting. Yeah, listen, listen. I, I I agree with that. I agree with that. I don't know what's wrong. Though. You got something, but but as far as a rapper, and I've been saying this about the baby. I like little baby, but the baby. I saw everybody. He can rap because you can mm-hmm. tell by when he puts songs together, his bars together. I'm like, yo, he's not a regular rap. Like he's not just playing around. Right. He can rap. He might just, you know, I think at least to me. So I think he's talented, but he gotta stop fighting. Though. Wait, which one, yeah, baby or little baby? I like the baby. Both. The I baby. don't know. I don't know any of Lil Baby's music. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yo, I, I really don't. I don't listen, know the difference. I, I know Birdman. That's it. Yo. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> listen to the Lil Baby's album, which is fire. Okay. I don't say that about about a lot of this, this new rap, but it's crazy. Well, that's the one you were saying when we had Shay on, right? Yeah, Lil Baby. Lil Baby. Yeah, Lil Baby. I tried Lil it, baby. man. I can't. You can't? Nah, man. <laughs> the m- it's too much mumble rap. Yeah, yeah. Rap. I mean, I respect that. I respect that he's got a fan base for a reason, so I'm not dissing yeah. it. It's just not for me. You just can't get into it. Okay. Yeah. That's so, fair. Yeah, who else? You got somebody else. <sighs> who? All right, give me, give me some, give me some help. Uh, some help. Old got, school, old got school got my, rappers. My, my money back, yo. Well, Jay, Jay is like number one, obviously, like okay. hands down. Uh, you said money back, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he, I, I, okay. I'm just saying, I'm just sure. saying who, who, who's, sure. who's hitting right now. I, I ain't saying you got chill with him. I'm just saying, this, I'm just saying this music. Yeah, money bag. Yeah, he's he's cool. I, I actually like OT Genesis. OT Genesis. Yeah, that's the cool. homie right there. Oh, the I, I, I like OT. That's, the homie. that's the homie. He's hilarious. He's a character he's, for he's sure. A funny, right. he's a funny dude. <laughs> See, I'm in I'm in the big leagues. He in the big. Right. Leagues. Yeah, he's definitely the homie, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you gotta love that dude. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, I like to, over the years, like, you know, you accumulate so much music. I, oftentimes I just put the shit on shuffle. And, you know, so it's like Jay, it'll be Jay, it'll be Nikki, it'll be Doja, it'll be Ariana, 
<laughs> it'll be give me in. So it's just like a, a litany, a, a group of, uh, you know, a combination of things, of right, artists. JD, I got a test for you. This, this will tell us right now if we can give him any music um, <laughs> um, options, right? Okay. Do you like the new Bruno Mars? Yes. And but... Anderson oh, Pat. Whoa, 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 whoa what but? but? What's the but? That song okay. is flawless. The but. No, no, no. The song is flawless. Okay. Right. Anderson Pat, though, I have. <laughs> I'm about to give the side eye. Like, yeah, Anderson what you about Pat, to say? So, uh, like, he was, it's hot wings. <laughs> he was on the song, right. He was on the song with, with Jasmine Sullivan. He has said some things that I was just like, we're in 2021. I ain't hear that and song. We're still talking about stupid shit. He said something to the effect of, you know, I got this girl pregnant and the baby's dark skin and I'm light skin, so that can't be my baby. And I was just like, Yeah, where I heard are that. we? I heard, like, that. What? I heard that. I heard that. I heard that. So after that, I was just like, mm, I don't know. But the song knocks. The song is everything. Yeah, he, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't lie. He, he could have said the baby got small teeth and I got big teeth, right? <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Besides music, what about? TV show. What you watching on TV? Okay, TV so now I, I got you with the TV. So, <laughs> I've probably watched everything on Netflix and Hulu since the start of <laughs> last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, I'm watching, um, you know, I like a little bit of reality TV, but my, my go-to is usually, like, murder mystery shit. So, like, mm -hmm. the ID channel is, like, my bedtime stories. <laughs> Okay. If you're going to bed scared. I, scared as hell. Yeah, like, I'm yo. on bed peacefully, like, okay, great, perfect. It's time for <laughs> yeah, sleep. Yo, it's, um, it's so bad right there. <laughs> Where I watch something like that, I gotta put King of Queens on after. Really? <laughs> Just to settle down. I gotta come down <laughs> off that off that no. ledge. Yeah, the Ivy channel is like the news in the house. Um the news. But on <laughs> yeah, people on, getting bodied. For real. Right. I watched this, uh, the documentary of, what was that documentary on the hotel? It was that like a hotel. Oh, yeah, I gotta crazy. catch that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I watched see that, that one. I gotta catch that one. That was tough. I, I just watched the, um, that docu-series with um, Woody Allen. I heard Harrow. that's wild, man. It's, he wild, I can't talk. It's so disturbing, but I was like glued to the TV. I was just like, what is happening? Like, I heard <laughs> like, like, like how is he even now? still walking the streets? Ow. Because of who we know, right, right, right. Um, so I that was wild. I also watched this other docu docu series on um Jeffrey Epstein. That yeah. was also wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, yeah. So that's that's usually my lane. Like I like a lot of like documentaries or docu series. Um, Queen Sugar, I yep. haven't gotten back on. Um, I'm like maybe a season or two behind, but I do want to catch up on that. Yeah, I caught up on um, that. I caught up on that last night. No, you don't like it? I ain't seen I ain't seen one episode ever. It's a what? good show, man. It's a good it show. Is. It's really good. I, I, yeah. Y'all tell me about it. I'm good on it. Yeah, it's good. It's good about <laughs> it. It do look like it do look like some old slave plantation type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the, the name itself, man, it I can't don't. watch it. But um <laughs> watch Queen Sugar. Like, well, it sounds like well, it's not that though. Yeah. It's not that at though. all, yeah. Yo, it's good I'll though. Give, I'll give you one rec recommendation that I saw this week. Um on Netflix, I thought it was pretty good. Um, Genie in Georgia. Yeah, I saw Genie. the promo for that. Yeah. Genie in Georgia or Genie G and G Georgia? Genie and Georgia, G I N N Y okay. and Georgia, like the like the state, right? Oh, okay. the premise of it is like we talked about this with with Vert, um, Derek, where it's basically like for some reason, for me, we end mm -hmm. up liking or watching teen movies that displays something or shows that we didn't go through, right? So mm -hmm. like, why, why, um, 10 Things They Hate About You or, or whatever these movies are, because uh, that's some reasons why. 10 Reasons Why. That's something that we <laughs> right. go through. We want to see what the hell was going on with other people's moms. So this is right. similar to that, but it's like three stories in one. So it's okay. like the girl is Jeannie, like 15, 16 years old, moving to a new school with her mom. Her mom is Georgia, who had her at like 15. So her mom is like 31. Mm -hmm. She's young has a young brother named Austin. So they named after, they named Virginia, Georgia, okay. Austin, they named after <laughs> right. the states that they were born in. Four states, rather. Mm -hmm. But Georgia has a past. And she's been hiding her past from her kids. Mm -hmm. So it's like a drama, but with a little bit of laughter and stuff like that. But you have the, the, the new kid coming to school, trying mm -hmm. to fit in. And she, she's biracial, she's black and white. 
right? Okay. Um, Georgia is white, Southern girl, but she has a lot of baggage, and her husband, her, her, her previous husband just passed away. Now she's moving, and she inherited her will. She's, she's like a hustler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's stuff out. So she has her own little story going on. You have the high school story going on. You have the son story going on, and the outside stuff going on. So it's all okay. this stuff intertwining in the, in the show. So like I watched right. the first episode, and I'm like, let me see if I like this. I was like doing work, and it's in the background. I'm like, yo, it ain't that bad. <laughs> so I ended up <laughs> watching throughout the throughout this week and last week. I watched all ten uh-huh. episodes, and it's pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Have I, you I, watched? I have you watched uh, Ozark? Oh yes, yeah. our show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, our show. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So good. Oh, oh, best shows on TV right now. Did you watch right. behind? Did you watch behind her eyes? Yes. That joint's crazy, yes. right? It really was. Yo, I, yo, <laughs> we we didn't talk about it. I knew, I knew that was. I knew. What, what, Come listen, on now. Let me say how I knew. <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go. When they kept showing money, when they kept showing money. I'm like, yo, why is he even involved? Like, why is he involved? Like, so by mm-hmm. by episode, by the, the second to last episode, I start saying like, yo, what's up? And once I figured out what she could do. Yeah, uh-huh. she, what 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 the um the other girl I've got the the girl that she ended up doing that oh, you know, yeah 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 I saw what she could do and then I kept seeing that all right he could do the same thing with her that's what they did you so did tight. you know they did the double switch though did they yeah yeah bro. yeah are you tripping be, now? Be, 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 because because yo he he did the switch to get the old Adele. Yeah, he was a Dell the whole. He was a Dell oh, the whole show. Right, 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 and then right. He right, switched right, right. because he knew that basically, um, old boy was gonna leave. Right. So he did the switch and 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 got her all drugged up to get her, you know how it is. Wow. So she he he was switching on that. The second switch, but I figured that out once the first switch happened. I'm like, yo, he uh-huh. gonna do it. it. It's gonna happen again. Oh, once you saw the first one. Yeah, once I saw it, once oh, I okay. knew the first all one right. was confirmed, I'm like, right, he's gonna do it again with mm-hmm. with old girl and the way he was looking at old boy. Oh, he was on him. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I knew. I knew something was going <laughs> he was, on. Yeah, he was feeling him. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That was it dope, was a, man. I I think that was a dope twist. Like I had, I, I wasn't ready for it. Right. You know Yo, what I'm saying? You know what I noticed too? I'm just seeing this with with Netflix. Maybe it's other shows, other other um platforms. Mm-hmm. But yo, it's mad British shows. Oh yeah, yes, and sure. even even like is they got like mad British shows, French shows, but the dubs on them. A lot of the if the dubbing is off, I can't watch it. Like, cause right. the mouth yeah. not matching is going to fuck you up. But, that. <laughs> <laughs> right, but a lot of them are really good. Like, I there was one called um, the tenant, the tenant or the. I saw the tenant. Called. I think it was on Netflix. Yeah, it was so yeah, good. Tenet. It was mad good. Tenet. I think it was the tenant. Um, I ain't hear that. One. But yeah, Netflix has has some some good stuff. If you yeah, they be doing their thing. <laughs> Yo, if you're an African American actor watching this, you need to learn a different language, cause the Brits are coming over here doing both double dipping. <laughs> right, They're going back over there. All we got I is Michael B. Jordan. Look, all we got is Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who else? But Keith Stansfield. Yeah, yep. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's pretty um, much um, it. Um, Amari Hardwick. <laughs> <laughs> right. him take there. him or leave him. Yeah. <laughs> Word. Um. Yeah, I was about to ask you. Do you see little fires everywhere? Yes. Yeah, that was that dope was, too, that man. Was a really good one. I actually wanted to watch it again, <laughs> just because like yeah. I enjoyed it so much that first time. Yeah, yeah. But the 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 acting similarities between Kerry and Young Kerry was yeah, like that was, that was dope. Even on. even both of the uh even Reese Witherspoon and the younger one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yep. did a good job. They did a good yeah, job they, with casting that. Reese, Reese has another show. It's I think it's called The Daily Show. Yeah, and The Morning Show. On, the Morning Show. Nah, the Morning Show. show. That show is dope, man. Yeah, Derek put me on that yep. one. Derek put me yeah, on that one. Yeah, that. And she was good in um, Big Little Lies. Yep. She's dope. She's that dope, was, man. She, I had Big Little Lies on the queue for at least two years. And I was like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Yeah, When I got seasons. to it, I was like, what the hell? Why did I get into the queue? Did you ever watch it? Nah. Oh, you buddy. Nah, nah, yeah. Yeah. The, the one thing about Reese, she can act, but she got a dome on her, yo. Join the, <laughs> yo, yo, she her cat her character on Big Little Lies is it's it's kind of similar to uh Lil Fires Everywhere. Yes. Kind of oh, yes. kind of like yes. in the middle of everything, yeah. like she kinda mm-hmm. like yeah, uh, it's a little messy. You yeah, know, it's two seasons. And people's stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean it's it, I, I got those shows neck and neck. Like it's it's close. Yeah. I mean Big yeah, Little Lies really and, and Lil Fires Everywhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I gotta watch that though. But now nah, I think yeah. uh, I think she's a dope actor. But you know, when that was really um set up, it the person that wrote it, I think it's a lady that wrote that book, basically you didn't know what race. Oh um, yeah, it was Carrie like Hilson, ambiguous. Carrie Hilson, yeah. not Carrie Hilson bugging. Carrie Washington. Yeah, Washington. Washington. <laughs> and they were trying to figure out and they it wasn't cast for a black woman. Mm. Like it just wasn't it wasn't her thought. But she, she turned it out. And then Carrie came in and was like, nah, I'm mm. going to do right. yeah, this. Mine. <laughs> that's good. That's good writing and good acting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Carrie, come on. Carrie Washington is dope. Yeah. So, All right. Uh, rapid fire? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna oh. um do something fun to wrap this up, right? Oh yes. Um, we gonna it's called our rapid fire section. Uh, it could be a this or that type question, open ended. Okay. okay. Um, we gonna we gonna lean on you a little bit. So yeah, you got it. All, All right. right, I'm ready. Um, what's your most challenging dish to cook? Most challenging dish to cook, uh, I would say fish, and not because it's challenging in and of itself, but I'm not a seafood eater. Right. <laughs> Uh, so uh, you know, I've had to, I've I, I had to learn to know what the flavors were, and you know how much of this and how much of that, how much you know how much less of this or that or whatever. Um, so that's probably been the most challenging. I was just like, I, I mean, it's always gonna be like just okay for me because I don't eat seafood. But right. like, you know, to someone that does eat food, seafood, and they're like, oh, this shit is bomb. <laughs> All right, that makes sense. No doubt. I got one for you. Okay. What's your most challenging order? So what was your most challenging order or event that you had to do? Okay. So last, not last May, but the May before, uh, before that, my cousin Crystal, she had a 40th birthday party. She had a yacht party and I hated the whole thing. What up, Crystal? And it was uh, one of, it was probably the biggest order that I had to date and we actually had to work the event. So getting like, all the food, you know, down in to Chelsea, uh, warming it up, serving on a moving boat that's constantly like shaking and moving. Uh, <laughs> and also, I think the biggest task, and usually it's with most of the orders that I have for like, if I'm doing like a party or something like that, excuse me. Um, my kitchen is, I live in New York, I live in the Bronx. My kitchen is like three squares. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have space. <laughs> I don't have any space. So like having to, you know, make 20 full pans of whatever, like mac and cheese, fried chicken, fried fish, bake this, bake that. I have one oven, one fridge, so much common space. So like having to really plan those things out, get really uh, <laughs> challenging oh. sometimes. Yeah. All right. What's up? Uh, better Beyonce album. Um, uh, we coming for your neck, so. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Uh, B-Day or four? Four, hands down. Four, right. <laughs> Yes, four. It's so funny because I have been asked that question so many times. Not that specifically, but what is, what's your favorite Beyonce album? And I'm like, are you dumb? I can't answer that. But four has definitely, I've been able, I've, I've come to terms with four being my favorite album. Yeah, I was looking at the playlist earlier. I, I, I'm not as huge of a Beyonce fan as you, but it got, oh. some, got some heavy bangers yes, on that journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the ones that people know about, like right. the hits, and yeah. then the ones that are not hits are hits. Facts. I hear B side tracks. We won't say yeah. not uh, hits, but B side tracks. Yes, right. B side tracks. Yes. <laughs> All okay. right. Since, we, since we're talking about Beyonce, I, I, I go right for the juggler. You got to okay. keep it 100, too. You can't say. All right, I think I know who to ask. Nah, nah, you don't you have no idea yet. I guarantee Are you about to get blocked? You <laughs> <laughs> about to disconnect the call. Now, who's the best singer? Okay. Beyonce? Uh huh. Or Whitney Houston? You better keep it 100. Whitney Houston, obviously. All right, that's all I want to hear. See, we, we can stop right there. <laughs> I want to I put you against the ropes because you got to say something. Right. However. See, however, caveat. All right. <laughs> nah. Whitney Houston is unmatched, and she's always going to be unmatched. But I think that Beyonce is Beyonce can sit at the same table as Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson and Cher and Prince and all those other and, and great eat, icons. Eat at the table? You mean eat, right? Eat, yeah. 
You, she, you, you, you serve is some she cooking? Is she cooking? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'll, I'll do the cooking. I'll do the cooking. The cooking. She can yeah, so, make so, all eat. So she gonna sit there and eat. <laughs> but you're not talking about like music wise. You saying she can sit there and eat and nah, be, nah, no, I, no, no, no. I'm music playing, wise, I'm playing. I'm about to say I ain't a huge Beyonce fan. She could definitely sit at that table. Mm-hmm. Though. Mm-hmm. Oh, nah, I, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being funny. About oh, that. Right. You, you said she could sit at the table with who? You said Prince, Michael Jackson. Prince, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. <laughs> Damn. See, all right. This, this, this is my thing. She's great. She's super. Mm-hmm. We don't know that. We can't deny that. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about artist wise, uh huh, because she's entertainer. She's an entertainer. Yeah. Like I, I put, I put Beyonce in the same category. With, like you put like a Janet, right? Because they can do everything. She's dancing. She can sing. She can dance. Well, Janet is an entertainer. Like Janet's like mm-hmm. Paula Abdul. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Like Paula Abdul. Yes. Right? Yes. That's, I think of like Prince. I'm not thinking like uh, you start saying Prince and MJ. I'm like, Ugh, it's tough for me to say that. But not, I'm not saying because she's an entertainer. She's great. But that's uh-huh. like that's that's crazy. Like that's it's just, like next level. Next level yeah. stuff. And she and she's and, definitely, you know, right. go, she's, one of the greatest. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> see, you have a cav- see, you have a caveat there. Yeah, man, you gotta ride. My- you gotta That's ride with the hives. Look, exactly. I didn't, ask, I didn't ask nothing about <laughs> no table. You talking about tables, food, cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you said I got some lamb chops ready and everything. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Uh hey, Here's my last one. Who's just uh single most uh influential uh chef or cook? Hmm. Uh, so I won't say I'll say that she was influential to me because so are we talking about like a well known chef or nah anybody? whatever, like who, who, anybody, who, yeah. who influenced your okay. style, who you look up to? So I think the the very first person excuse me, um, that I ever was like, oh, well, what, what's she doing? What is she making? There's this lady on Food Network, and her name is Ina Garten. <laughs> and she used to have this show on Food Network called The Barefoot Contessa. Oh, yeah, she, yeah she, she was serious. She was serious. Serious. Was she was serious about her shit every time. And she, it was, like, so cool to me because, like you said, we watch things that, you know, we've never experienced. She lived in this bomb-ass house in the Hamptons. You know, she had all this different, like, entertaining space. And I was like, wow, I need that. <laughs> I need that. So she was, like, the very first person, like, I would tune in every day. You know, it, it would come on two or three times. And after a while, like, you know, uh, TiVo was around at that time. Like, how old am I? Damn, TiVo. But TiVo was around. <laughs> and, you know, I would record the shows or whatever and watch when I got home from work. So she was, like, one of the very first people that really made me think about cooking and taking cooking serious. So, I, I keep on hunting. I miss Paula Dean. Hey, y'all. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Paula Actually, Dean down. Funny, funny story. I had that, that same time, the same trip that I went to, uh, to uh, Le Cordon Bleu. Uh-huh. I was hanging out with my homeboy at the time. And I was down there for the weekend. I was like, let's take a trip to um, Paula Dean's restaurant. It was in Savannah. We was in Atlanta. So I was like, we can take a three-hour drive. There's nothing. We got like, mm, I want to say two hours out. It was like torrential downpour. Torrential downpour. Couldn't see on the roads. I was like, damn, we really drove two hours for us to have to literally turn back around. So we never made it to Paula Dean's restaurant, but it was like very, very high on the list until, you know, she started her antics and shit. And now, right. Yeah. yeah, she might have had you in the back <laughs> cooking. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, exactly. You like, like, yes, Paul. Yes, Paula. <laughs> yes, Paula. <laughs> yes, Paula. <laughs> I'm lucky some collard greens. <laughs> right. You lucky greens? <laughs> no problem. Now, now, listen, now listen, that's all <laughs> you know, know what's funny? Before I get to my last question, I would tell people, like, Southern cooking is the same, right? So mm. my mom say it's not, but I, I disagree. We we beg disagree on this. <laughs> but I tell her about like black and white people cooking in the South. Mm-hmm. You can find a black a white person that cook just like a black person in the South, vice versa. It's mm-hmm. just cause it's, it's what they come to how they brought up. So Paul right. Dean was like, like my grandmother cooking. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, yep. You know what I'm saying? For a little butter here, she never oh, mentioned anything. A little butter, a, little a lot of butter. A stick of butter here, a stick of this. She didn't mention nothing. Right. Just throwing in there, and she was like, "Here, exactly, um, but, enjoy." <laughs> my last one for you, man. So you got a dinner party. You invite five guests. 
Dead, uh, alive, anybody you want, who would you invite? All right, dinner party. Five people, Beyonce. Uh, <laughs> oh, but before you yeah. finish, before Beyonce, you finish five what, what, what would you cook to? What would you cook okay. to? The two part. All right. So, all right, you know what? Beyonce is not invited to this dinner party. We're we, we, we going we gonna, we gonna to leave her home with the kids, okay? <laughs> Blue, Blue got her booked and busy anyway, so <laughs> she can't come out. All right, but definitely, uh, <laughs> damn. Anybody. All right, Whitney Houston, <laughs> uh, Leslie Jordan. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, I, I want to say Monique. Because Monique? I know that, <laughs> you know, Monique from the park? No, how, how you going to leave Beyonce home and have Monique go? <laughs> well, I, I'm leaving Beyonce home because I, I want I want to have a good time. I want everybody to let their hair down. I want them to, I want it to be cussing. I want, I want them to act a fool. And Beyonce is a little too, you know, too highbrow right. for that. Okay. Right, that's three. Um, I said Monique. I said, what? <laughs> Yeah, Monique. I, I feel like she would she would bring the comedic relief between her and Leslie Jordan. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Monique. Uh, Let's have, yeah. have, <laughs> have, have Joe Torre over there. <laughs> Mark Cooper. <laughs> Mark Curry. Cooper. Uh, let's see. Who else? Three, two more people. Two more people. Monique, Whitney Houston, uh, Leslie Jordan. Uh, I would I would invite uh what's what's the little man? Uh comedian. Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. I I I I would I would bring him. I would invite him. Uh and the fifth. Who's the fifth? The fifth. Soldier boy and Draco. You like that. We would you know what? like that. Everybody was you would be entertaining though. Word. Yeah. Well, I, I I would I would I would sub that rapper for Plies. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. What's it, baby? Plies. I definitely have Plies there before Monique. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. But then Plies can cut ass on Monique all night. They can cut ass on each other. I hear so, you. Yeah, good times. So uh, said, all right. So what I'm making? I'm making uh, LeBlanc mac and cheese. So white mac and cheese with Gruyere. Um, I'm gonna use a little Munster. I'm gonna use a little Gouda. Uh, some lamb chops, obviously. Lamb chops has literally skyrocketed. Like over the, la I've never known so many people to eat lamb chops than I have this year. Well, this past year. Um, so I'm making my my chimichurri lamb chops. Um, some lemon garlic broccolini. Uh, maybe some risotto. Risotto is good. Uh, yes, risotto. <laughs> You make it right? Yeah. It's popping. Uh, and for dessert, I think we're going to go with mm, a bourbon peach cobbler. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yo, but they, but they watching, Mo, Mo watching the carbs, she can't have the lasagna. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, yo, I'm chilling. Like, not my loves, yeah. not my loves. <laughs> not my loves. <laughs> not my loves. <laughs> not my loves. <laughs> can't do that. No, right. thank you, sweetie. Right. Word. Yo, so what else you know you got what? going? What you, you say? know what? I'm I'm actually I might I might have to swap Monique out for 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 Tiffany. Tiffany New York College. <laughs> oh Tiffany I'm who? gonna bring her ass to the I think you talking about you talking about Tiffany New York? You talking about I love New York. New York. Yeah. I love New York. Yes. I love I'm, Tiffany I'm, Haddish. Me too. I said Tiffany oh. Haddish. I'm like, yo, no, not both. <laughs> nah. Yo, so 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 pub your stuff, man. What else you got going on? What's the future look like? Give me some of your stuff. Your yeah, info, your social media, your all that. Social. So social is on Twitter. We have CBC Bronx CBC. Um, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, it's Cutting Board Catering Co. Um, you can email us at Cutting Board Catering Co. at gmail.com as well for orders and inquiries. Um, but right now we, we're probably going to get back started with Supper Club in a few weeks. Um, we're going to start working on menus for that. We, like I said, we have my. Uh, Cocktail line. So we have these. I don't know if you see right here. Yep, yeah, it. Savage. Uh, so, yeah, it's a quarantini. Um, and it's made yeah. with peach schnapps, uh, peach puree, 
uh, 100 proof vodka. <laughs> and so it's gonna give me uh, lit if I get I get some. Oh, ab- absolutely. Right. And they, right now we got we got three flavors. We have the quarantini. We have the never have a ever, which is like a um, it's like a uh, mango lemonade, but it's made with Hennessy. Um, Hennessy, <laughs> right? I, I, I'm not a fan of the Hennessy myself. Like, I can't do the, the Hennessy. I like bourbon. I can do Hen- cognac. Hennessy's nasty. Let's keep it real. It's Hennessy disgusting. is garbage. Been discussing for years. The BSOP, the black, the privilege, all of it is garbage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but the N words like it, so I make it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we got a, um, a uh, that was the Never Have I Ever. We have a, a blue one. Why the hell I can't think of the name of the blue one right now? <laughs> But we have one that's like a uh, a Long Island, so it has tequila, it has vodka, it has rum. And you, um, you ship that, right? Yeah, the Bronx Blue Bomb. That's what it's called. Bronx Thank you. Blue Bomb. Yeah, that's like our signature Bronx drink. We're gonna get you rocked. Uh, so uh, we have a rose margarita. That one was like the big a big seller over the summer. Um, so yeah, we got a few things. I want to come out. I want to get you know a new line. I want to get some new flavors going. Um, we want to have some pop-ups. So as soon as, you know, we can kind of get back in the city and start planning functions and people are like, you know, coming back out with your masks, <laughs> uh, you know, we want to kind of get the ball rolling. We were supposed to have a, a Savage Sip party. Um, it was like a launch party last summer, but, you know, we were in the thick of COVID, so that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can catch me on social, Instagram, uh, Cutting Board Catering Co., um, we have a whole bunch of, you know, menus and pictures and you can eat with your eyes. Uh, everything, everything's good. I ain't going right. to hold you. Everything's good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we just, you know, we out here trying to make a name, trying to, you know, level up every chance we get. So, you know, the followers help, the likes help, the shares help, you know, all that good stuff. Definitely. Yeah, well, we definitely here to support you, man. Pleasure. Right, thank you. Pleasure having it. you on, man. You might um, have to send you some stuff. I actually want to get a, a, a sweatshirt, a hoodie. Yeah. I was like, damn, I probably should have ordered one before the show. Yeah, we definitely sold <laughs> so out. Quick. Definitely sold, yeah. sold out. Yeah, man. We, we gonna, we gonna, yeah, we gonna definitely collab. need one of those. Yeah, we gonna collab, Derek and I, and get that. Yeah, get going. some stuff going. It's getting it's nice. It might be teased, some colorways, yeah. some we'll figure something out. Yeah, some hat, something. Yeah, dad yeah. hats or whatever. Well, yeah, that would be cool. Um, so yeah, I, I eventually. I think the end goal for me, I want to, you know, start my own like cookware line. I want like utensils. I want plates, dishes, and stuff like that. Um, I want to be the black male Martha Stewart. Oh, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. For that void. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, that's that's what we got going on right now. You know, every few days we have stuff going on on, um, on uh, Instagram. You know, you could check us out. Um, I want to do some more cooking tutorials and stuff like that. So stay tuned for all that good stuff. Cool. No, appreciate well, uh, appreciate you, uh, Chef Day JD. It was a, thank you. a, it was pleasure, a pleasure having you on. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. So uh, Great Mind Podcast, you can follow us on IG at the Great Minds Podcast, Twitter, uh, Great Minds P1. And you can listen and watch anywhere you can watch podcasts. So this is dope. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you all for watching. I'm going to holler at you, though. Yep. (laughs) Peace, y'all. Great minds think alike. Great minds podcast. Great minds think alike. Great minds podcast. Great minds think alike. Great minds podcast. Great minds think alike. That's right. You're now tuned into the Great Minds podcast. 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 Eric Devon, oh boy, like him on a song. Culture's sake now. Thank God. The panic is gone. Time to heal from the pain. Take the pain and just all. Ain't got to win. The stakes are high like a cannabis bone. Okay, it's game time. Picture with the balls. That's a face time. Great Minds spreading faster than a rumor through the grapevine. Yeah. Born and Derek. What? Deserve the merit. All saluted. Yeah. It's more than just a podcast show. It's like a movie. Born and Derek. What up? Great Minds think alike. It's the Great Minds podcast. Great Minds think alike. It's the Great Minds podcast. Great Minds think alike. It's the Great Minds podcast. Great Minds think alike. Oh. You're now tuned into the Great Minds podcast. You're now tuned into the Great Minds podcast. You're now tuned into the Great Minds podcast. You're now tuned into the Great Minds podcast.